Welcome to RoboSquid TV. I'm Kyle, and together we're going to make beautiful websites. Welcome back, devs. In our last video, we made a whole responsive website using Flexbox, but we made our website even better with the new native CSS variables. In this video, I'm going to show you how to simplify your CSS and easily change the theme of your website using dynamic CSS variables. Thank you to Hover.com for sponsoring this episode. When you learn how to make your first website with me, head over to hover.com forward slash robosquid TV for 10% off your first domain name and support the show. CSS custom properties as they are officially known, or CSS variables, are now fairly well supported, so it may be time to add this awesome feature of CSS to your web dev tool belt. And if you use a CSS preprocessor like SAS or Stylus, I'll show you why native CSS variables are even better. CSS custom properties allow us to define custom variables, like a color, and use that variable in place of a hard-coded value in our code, so we can go in and change it later in one place and the changes will flow throughout the page. This makes it easy to update the theme of your website or adjust other values with only CSS. By the way, we did go over most of this in our last video where we used Flexbox and CSS variables to build an entire website from scratch. So if you're up to it, it's a little long, but it's a great resource. But CSS variables deserve their own video. Before I go into the pros and cons of anything, let's see how to use CSS variables. First of all, native CSS variables follow standard CSS syntax, and we have to define our custom property inside of a CSS selector, and then the CSS property will be available to all child elements. The value can also be rewritten further down the tree, and regular CSS inheritance still holds true. If the color of the text in the body is set to blue, and then the variable is later reassigned to red, the color inheritance past that points would continue to be red. So if we want our variables to be available to the entire document, we should place them at the topmost element in our DOM. The CSS pseudo selector for root will be where we place our global CSS variables. What we do first is define our custom properties, which will be the variable name, and your variable must start with two dashes to indicate that it is a custom property. We'll name ours primary color. Then we simply give the custom property a value like normal. The value can be anything you want. Since I plan on using this property as a color, I'm going to give it a color value for blue. I could make the value anything I want, like 4 pixels or solid or block. It's all about the context. The value can be anything you want, it's just going to be substituted in. It might be useful to turn long values into short readable names, like if you have a box shadow you plan on using more than once, you might want to convert that into a variable. That way it's easier to write and remember, and if you want to change it later, you only need to make a single change. So since we're going to be using this property as a color, that's the type of value we're going to need to give it. And to use our new variable, we need to make use of some hideous syntax, but it has a purpose and I will explain. If we want to set the background color of this button, for instance, we'll give it a value of var and our variable name, dashes included, inside parentheses. And it's as simple as that. We can now easily change the value whenever we want. Now that's really cool because we can use these in some creative ways. First, if you've been using a CSS preprocessor such as SAS, you may be asking who cares and SAS variables look a lot nicer. Well, native CSS variables offer us a few advantages. First of all, CSS variables are subject to scoping like we said earlier on. We scoped our variables inside the root of our document, but we can assign variables at any level in our document or reassign variables. Best of all though, CSS variables are live. You can change their value in real time with JavaScript and watch the changes take place immediately. You can't do that with SAS because the values get compiled in with your code when you export. We made use of live CSS variables and overwriting values in our last video when we use CSS variables in our media queries. The example we used, we changed the direction of our flexbox row by changing the value of the flex direction inside of our media queries. Okay, so let's talk about that awful syntax. CSS custom properties are really cool, but the way they were designed, you don't have to use them exclusively. You can integrate CSS variables into your old SAS websites without any conflict. The syntax won't cause CSS to error in your browser, it will simply be ignored. The double dash before the property name is already similar to vendor prefixes that are already present in CSS for new features that are not fully implemented. And the var is similar to other CSS functions like calc or linear gradient. This video was made possible by Hover.com. Hover.com provides the best way to find new domains with hundreds of extensions to choose from. 
I myself use Hover.com for my website, vidfire.tv, and a few other secret side projects. And for just $5 for an entire year, you can forward a custom email address to your already existing email, which is a great way to add legitimacy to your online business with a professional email address rather than giving people your Gmail or Hotmail address. And if you aren't planning on coding your own website right away, Hover.com integrates with a ton of services like Shopify, so you can get an online web store started in just a few minutes. But the best thing about Hover is their support. When you call Hover.com's customer support, there is no robot and no phone tree, just a real person on the other end ready to help. It's honestly so rare to get this kind of personal support from a company, it's almost strange to hear a real person pick up the phone. Thank you again to Hover.com for providing you with 10% off your own domain name or custom email by using the link Hover.com forward slash RoboSquidTV and supporting the show. All right, guys, if you like this, thank you very much. Of course, we do have a Twitter, a Facebook, Instagram, GitHub, everything else you'll need to get connected with us after you're done watching. Of course, if you like this episode, please, please share it with your friends. Give it a thumbs up. Let everyone know you liked it. It really helps us out. Have a good one. We'll see you in the next video.